Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. This is Taliesin McKnight, and today's subject is the Caduceus Wand of Hermes. And today I would like to pose a question. Did the ancients hide secrets in the symbols of their gods? Well, that is something to think about for a moment before we get into the deeper symbolism of the Caduceus Wand of Hermes, we have to stop and wonder, did the ancients hide secrets in the symbols of their gods? So is there a deeper mystery than what appears on the surface? Sometimes it's possible that there are deeper mysteries veiled right before our very eyes. And then again, it's possible that this may just represent the basic qualities of this god. So that's possible too. The Caduceus wand shows a wand or staff with two serpents wrapped around it. This is a symbol of duality, of opposites. Now, the basic qualities of the Greek god Mercury, the Roman, uh, the Greek god Hermes, the Roman Mercury. Hermes was the messenger of the gods. So Hermes was the messenger of the gods. So communication, communication is an exchange of information between two people. You have someone talking and someone listening. So it's an exchange, okay? Listening and then speaking. It is the transference of thought or ideas between people. So there you have the opposites of the two serpents. Messenger of the gods, communication. Also, Mercury was a god of commerce. Commerce is the transfer of goods and money. So it is trade. So in commerce, there is a trade between parties of goods and money. So again, you have the two serpents, a transfer between two people or more people. There's still a transfer. Negotiation, communication, messages, commerce. Now, going along with this idea of two sides to a coin, you have communication and then you have deception. You have commerce and then you have theft. When someone is taking something from another person or a group of people. So Hermes was sometimes considered a trickster, a, uh, the god of theft and deception as well. So the two serpents wrapped around a staff or a wand. These two serpents represent all opposites. You have light and dark, night and day, hot and cold, male and female, expansion and contraction, attraction and repulsion, all opposites. Now in alchemy, uh, the, the metal mercury, mercury, the metal mercury is neither a liquid nor a solid, so it transcends liquids and solids. Now, in the spiritual symbolism of alchemy, there are three occult principles which are symbolized by salt, sulfur, and mercury. Salt represents fixation, solidity, whereas sulfur represents change, volatility. So you have two opposites, salt and sulfur, within the occult symbolism of alchemy. The philosophical alchemy represent all opposites, hot and cold, light and dark, yin and yang, male and female. And mercury in alchemical philosophy of the West represents transcending opposites. Now on the wand of Hermes, the Caduceus wand, 
you see two serpents wrapped around a staff. A lot of times there are wings above this. Wings represent transcendence and exaltation. So this is transcending opposites. Now this is a theme that you'll find in the Kabbalah, in alchemy, in some Eastern systems, such as Taoism, you find this concept within yoga. So the idea of opposites found within nature and within our own psyche. Now in Jungian psychology, all men have a feminine side and all women have a masculine side. This is Jungian psychology of Carl Gustav Jung, the Swiss psychologist and bringing that other aspect to the surface of our consciousness is creating wholeness. Now, you notice with the union of male and female, you have a child. This is the secret process of creation. The union of opposites between male and female creates a child. The, the union of opposites creates a third point. In occult symbolism, this is the basic meaning of the triangle. It's the union of two opposites to create a third thing. This is the secret principle of creation. Now, the triangle is often seen as a sexual symbol. The upward triangle is a phallus, a male sexual organ. The downward pointed triangle is a womb, the female aspect. And notice that the interlocking upward and downward triangles, the hexagram, the Star of David, is this exact symbol of Hermes, the union of opposites. So you see here this concept of union. Now in the Kabbalah, there is a lot of sexual imagery. If you read the Zohar, the book of the Zohar, the Sefer HaZohar, the book of splendor, you will see constant references to sexuality, union of the male and female aspects of God and within our own psyche. And that is the Kabbalah. Now, remember I mentioned the three occult principles and alchemical philosophy of salt, sulfur, and mercury? In the Kabbalah, you have the three mother letters. Mem is water, passivity, reception. It is yin, in a sense. So, uh, that's mem. The letter shin in Hebrew is projection, action, fire. So mem and shin are two Hebrew letters that represent yin and yang, all opposites. The Hebrew letter aleph transcends opposites. The Hebrew letter aleph, which has a central yud with two va a, cent a central vav with two yuds on each side. Notice the magician card in some decks, such as Rider Waite. He points up up with one hand with the wand and points down. The magician is the olive. Com uniting above and below. Uniting the higher aspects to the lower. As above, so below. And as below, so above. And this is the secret of creation. So the two serpents, if you took away the wand, then the symbol would be two serpents wrapped around each other almost like they're having sexual union. So that's interesting. This is the triangle. This is the quadrature of the circle. This is the rose, a female symbol on the phallic cross. This is the hexagram, the star of David. This is the union of opposites. Now, as I said, this is basic symbol of the Greek god Hermes. Did the ancients conceal a secret doctrine of magic, of mysticism? Was an ancient mystery a secret contained in this symbol? That's debatable, and that's up for each of us as independent thinkers to decide. But Hermes, the Greek god Hermes, the Roman Mercury, messenger of the gods, communication. Communication is an exchange of ideas or thoughts between two points, or several people could be listening and talking, okay? Um, 
commerce, exchange of goods and money, negotiation, business. These are opposites. An exchange has to occur. And yet, it, there is the opposite side of the coin. You have commerce and theft, communication and deception. So, the wings, the wings on his sandals represented movement between two points. And Mercury, or Hermes, the Greek god, was sometimes seen as a trickster deity. So that's interesting. And he was also a psychopomp, which means that Hermes would guide the souls of the dead to the underworld. So also bridging between life and death. Now this is a phallic symbol in a sense because it's a wand with two serpents copulating and having sex. So you see a sexual symbol. Sometimes this is seen to represent the chi or the life force, the life energy of the body. You'll notice that the wand is the spinal column. And the two serpents in yoga represent two opposing currents of energy in the body, which are called Ida and Pingala around the central spinal column called the Shushumna in yoga. In Chinese Taoism, you have yin and yang. Now, in Chinese medicine, they'll often try to balance the two currents of energies in the body, and this creates healing. So through Dai Chi, through having certain foods, in Chinese Oriental medicine, you'll balance the currents of energy in the body to create healing. And it is seen as an imbalance which creates suffering and disease. And this there is a similar thing taught within a certain Rosicrucian group. I won't elaborate on that. Now, these are two opposing currents of energy of life force in the body and in the cosmos and within our own psyche, of course. Now, the tree of life has two opposing pillars, Joaquin and Boaz. Now, the tree of life is not just a map of the universe and a map of our own psyche. The tree of life is also a map of the human body. The ten sephirot on the tree of life represent centers of energy in the body, and the 22 paths represent currents of energy. Now, the two opposing pillars on the tree of life are two opposing currents of energy in the body. And you'll notice that these are also the two pillars on King Solomon's porch and the temple of King Solomon. And these are the twin pillars of Freemasonry. The twin pillars of Freemasonry. Is there a secret there? What about in the Star of David? Is there anything deeper within a symbol than is on the surface? So, that is debatable. Now, whether this was just a symbol of the attributes of Mercury, the god, or if the ancients actually concealed hid secrets in the symbols of their gods. So that's something to consider. Now the Caduceus wand is dualism, reconciliation of opposing forces. And the wings above represent transcending duality. And that in a nutshell is the Caduceus wand of Hermes. Anyways, thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Now, I would like to get your own thoughts on this. This is my opinion. This is not the truth. Anything I say in my videos is not the truth. It's my opinion. Now, if you have a different view, maybe you disagree with me. Um, feel free to put your own thoughts in the comments. So, I want to hear what you think. This is an exchange between you and me. You know, if you watch my videos, I want to know what you think. And uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe you disagree. So, it's important to have an exchange of thought and to try to see the truth. I think this is important. And also, do you think that the ancients may have concealed something deeper in their symbols? something veiled from our eyes. It's possible, whatever the case may be. I look forward to hearing your feedback and what you think. Anyways, this is Tally Sim McKnight, and that is my personal view, my own opinion, on the Caduceus Wand of Hermes. The Caduceus Wand. Anyways, thank you for joining me, and I hope y'all have a great day, and see y'all next time.